Now a lot of people all over the world have probably all heard of or listened to artists like Drake, Tory Lanez or The Weeknd but a lot of people probably don't know much about the big city they grew up in. Today we'll be looking at the streets of Toronto and how it was a miracle that the artists I just named managed to make it out. Let's get into the video. Before I get into this one guys, today we are running another giveaway. This time for an iPhone 14 Pro and I'm giving this away to a random subscriber of my channel which comments the letters K on Jay Busy's latest release called Noid. Make sure you keep posted on my Instagram in the description to see if you've won. Don't really give a toss, I know they're pre annoyed. Isolate through winners and step out in the Mercedes coupe. The twins move so aggy, they twinning in BMWs. So like I said before, we are going inside Canada. As a whole, Canada has always struggled with being overlooked in the music scene, especially in hip hop. Before the late 2000s, the only type of Canadian born music that really managed to hit mainstream was coming from the rock genre, with Canadian artists like Avril Lavigne and groups like Nickelback dominating the charts in the early 2000s. It would take all the way up to the early 2010s when Canada's first global hip hop success would be found. But before we get into all of this about the come ups of Toronto rappers. Let's look into the dangerous streets young Toronto rappers have to come up on and one of the most notorious areas in the greater Toronto area is around an hour away from downtown Toronto in a neighbourhood called Jane and Finch. When outsiders look at Toronto it's easy to focus on the big skyscrapers and modern buildings in downtown Toronto but Toronto is a massive city with it being around four and a half times bigger than London so far away from all the modern and exciting inner city there's areas that like Jane and Finch. Now Jane and Finch doesn't have the best reputation in Toronto. It's quite notorious for being a low income and crime ridden neighbourhood to say the least. And a lot of this is due to a big divide in the neighbourhood which has haunted the area in the last few decades. See Jane and Finch isn't seen as one whole area. The neighbourhood has been split into two sides. One being North Jane and Finch and the other being South Jane and Finch. And both sides don't have the best relationship with each other. Dating all the way back to the 90s there's always been a big rivalry between both sides. There's been many attempts throughout the years to die down tensions like one concert in 2001 which was held to bring both sides under one roof but this didn't end well with two men being shot dead when the concert came to an end. See Jaina Finch's gang history runs real deep. The north side of Jaina Finch are Crips and the south side are Bloods and as you probably know Bloods and Crips normally don't have the best relationship. So let's first look at north side Jaina Finch home to the Crips. Now just like there are two sides of Jane and Finch, there are also a lot of small residential areas inside the neighbourhood. There are still some residences inside Jane that don't get along with other residences inside their own half of the neighbourhood. One residence which is probably the most infamous inside North Jane and Finch is an area called Driftwood. Now Driftwood is home to the first big music movement coming out of Jane and Finch from some Driftwood Crips who now go by the name of Wasgang and the first artist to really put on for the group was a drifted artist called Robin Banks who burst onto the scene in early 2015 with songs like Up Next which pioneered a new trap wave sound to Toronto but it wouldn't be long until someone from Robin Banks' crew would be brought to national attention after a crip from Driftwood called Wassi was shot dead on July 25th 2015. Wassi grew up in the Driftwood area but early on in life started finding himself in trouble with the law which led him to being in and out of jail from a young age. But on June 28th, 2015, Wassi would take his life of crime to the next level. Around 6am, Wassi and his friend would find themselves going to an apartment party near downtown Toronto. But it would only be an hour after the two stepping in the party that according to Wassi's friend, Wassi took interest that another party goer's gold watch and chain. An altercation happened which ended with two men being shot dead and Wassi and his friend making a run for it. Wassi and his friend became main suspects for the murder of the CCTV footage was found of the pair leaving the apartment straight after the murder. CCTV footage even captured Wassi and his friend reenacting the murder while they was leaving the apartment in the lift. Wassi's friend handed himself in after they were wanted but Wassi had other ideas and went on the run. Most people when they're on the run for a murder they would normally hide out or move to a low key part of the country or even attempt to leave the country completely but Wassi had different plans and was just living like any other person in the city would going clubbing in 
downtown Toronto and still enjoying life. But this was short lived. With less than a month after the double murder, there were reports that Wassi was inside the club in Toronto. And in no time, several undercover officers were waiting outside the club, ready to catch him. Wassi left the club and got into a car. And this was when undercover officers made their move, blocking in the vehicle. But stuff went left when shots started firing between the police officers and Wassi, with a shot ending up hitting Wassi in the chest, sadly killing him. Wassi was loved and respected a lot, especially in his driftwood area, with Robin Banks and his crew even renaming their music group to Wassgang in remembrance to him. And a lot of members even started rocking gold chains with a pendant of his face on it. Wassi's crazy story brought a lot of attention towards North Jane and Finch, and there was only more attention to the area after another double murder took place and after party of the biggest Toronto rapper Drake's OVO festival. Every year, Drake holds a massive festival in Toronto and invites some of the biggest artists to perform to his home city, creating one of the biggest events in Toronto. And the nightclub in Toronto called Music Nightclub was hosting the after party, which a few high profile people were attending. But somehow despite all the security and police guarding the club, someone managed to get inside the club and let off several shots hitting a man who went by the name of Slugger killing him inside the club. After the shots, people started to disperse outside the club, but shooting continued outside, with several shots hitting random civilians trying to escape the carnage. Sadly, one of these shots ended up hitting a young woman, who was desperately trying to get into a cab to escape the bullets. Slugger was linked to the Crips, in an area called Retsdale, who have a feud with the Crips in Driftwood. Now a few months after this week of madness, Robin Banks alongside some of his friends from Driftwood, dropped a song which blew up more than they probably thought. The song named Wasgang dropped in November 2015 and quickly amassed millions of views on YouTube, bringing listeners from all over the world in probably their first introduction into real Toronto street music, showcasing the world to Robin Banks and another rapper who soon after would take over the Toronto rap game called Presser. In this song, Presser really stood out over everyone else with his unique high pitched voice and baby face, creating an early buzz for himself. Presser started making more noise in 2016, releasing songs like Demiana and TBH getting millions of views. But before Presser even picked up a mic, he was already well known in Jane and Finch. Less than two months of being born, Presser's dad hit national news after he got into an altercation with a security guard after he was angry waiting in a line for too long outside the party. After a while of waiting, he calmly went to his car to grab a gun and shot the security guard in the chest, killing him. Presser's dad ended up getting 50 years to life for this murder before Presser even properly started in life, leaving Presser's mum to attempt to take care of him and his older brother alone. But with Presser growing up in the streets of Driftwood without having a proper father figure with him, led him and his older brother to get involved in crime from an early age. In 2011, this caught up to Presser and his older brother, with both of them getting caught up in a gang takedown, dubbed Project Marvel, which took down 60 alleged violent gang members around the Driftwood area. Presser's brother was actually labelled the leader of the gang in the area, and Presser himself was treated as the second in command, despite him only being around 15 at the time. Presser's brother would end up getting sentenced to 10 years for gun, drug and gang charges, and Presser ended up spending a little bit of time inside himself. But in 2016, Presser started making a new avenue for himself, with him quickly being quite a big music figure in the Toronto scene. But it wouldn't be long before Presser would be wrapped up into another case that could have easily ended his career short. A few months after Presser dropped probably his biggest solo track at the time, called Demiana, West Gang were throwing an apartment party in downtown Toronto when an opposing gang crashed the party. This led to a shootout between the two groups in the corridor of the apartment, leading all the way to the elevators of the apartment. Not long after this, allegedly West Gang members invited over two 17 year old boys to an apartment who they thought tipped off their ops about their party. When the two boys got to the apartment, they were subjected to some quite crazy stuff. It was said they were tied to a chair so they couldn't escape and were regularly beaten. They were even forced to play Russian roulette with a loaded handgun. This went on for around 48 hours until they moved to another location which even happened to be one of the kidnappers home addresses. While one of the kidnappers family was still inside and living inside the property, it was claimed that the two boys were even forced to do sexual acts on each other. The kidnappers after some time demanded the family members of the two boys for $3,000 for their release and a further $10,000 for the videos of them two doing sexual acts not to be posted online which was eventually
actually paid out and the boys were released. Now Presser actually got charged for this kidnapping case a few days after the release of the two boys but managed to bail out while police were still collecting evidence and everything. And when Presser came out, he started showing that he wasn't playing around with his music career, dropping tracks throughout the rest of 2016, hitting millions of views, which at this point was hella rare for a Canadian rapper. Drake even co-signed Presser, eventually taking him out to tour with him in Europe, leading everyone in Canada to think that they have a new superstar on their hands. Robin Banks was also doing his thing, dropping tracks like Priceless, which was easily one of the hottest tracks coming out of Toronto in 2016 and Robin Banks continued to drop bangers in the first half of 2017. On the 14th of April 2017, Robin Banks music career was put on hold. Robin Banks' friend was celebrating his birthday in a shisha bar up in the city. So Banks pulled up to the bar to show some love to his friend. But someone in the bar must have gave the drop that Robin Banks was there. Because when Banks and some of his friends went outside the bar to smoke, two men were waiting outside in a blacked out car and let off several shots hitting three people but mostly targeting Robin Banks. Banks was shot nine times in his legs stopping him from being able to run away from the shots but a final shot to the neck dropped him to the ground and Robin Banks was rushed to hospital in a life-threatening condition. When the news came out quite a few reports on social media were claiming that Robin Banks had lost his life to the shots but luckily Banks managed to power through eventually waking up a couple days afterwards thanks to his treatment. Banks started doing well in hospital when friends and family were were looking forward to a full recovery but around a month later the news broke that Robin Banks may never be able to walk again with shots to his legs literally crippling him leaving him in a wheelchair but this didn't stop him with him still releasing tracks and continuing to grow his up top label despite him literally being paralyzed which is quite inspiring but Robin Banks was left with a better fate than a lot of rappers in his area Toronto throughout the years has had quite bad luck with their rappers it kind of seems like there's a curse going around anytime it looks like a rapper is on his way up. They always end up dying or getting caught up in a really bad case. Back around the same time Presser was arrested for his kidnapping case, a new up and coming rapper from a nearby opposing area to West Gang called Sizzlack was shot and killed days after he released his biggest track called Realist in the Sears. Another rapper from the same area as Sizzlack was also shot dead in 2017 called Young Dubs. Around the same time of Young Dubs' murder, another West Gang rapper called YG was a top suspect in a shooting which left an opposing gang member dead and he went on the run to America. And yet again another West Gang rapper by the name of FB was remanded for a case where him and three other men allegedly ran up in illegal marijuana dispensary, pistol whipped a worker and tying up any staff members inside the shop in plastic restraints until the police pulled up and they escaped. But one of the biggest losses to come from the Toronto rap scene came on June the 30th 2018, a rapper called Smoke Dog. Now in 2018 Smoke Dog was one of the biggest things coming out of Toronto. He was coming out of a neighbourhood called Regent Park located in downtown Toronto. But despite Regent Park being just minutes away from the rich and thriving centre of the city, and even Regent Park itself being redeveloped into quite an impressive area, it still contains quite a few low income residents who are left to try and keep up with the pretty much unaffordable cost of living in downtown Toronto. Now in June 2018, Smoke Dog alongside his manager went to a nightclub called Cube and everything seemed alright. But when Smoke Dog was outside the club, he got into an argument with a West Gang rapper called 21 Knee, which ended with Smoke Dog alongside his manager being shot dead. It's rumoured that 21 Knee mocked Smoke Dog just before this incident due to Smoke Dog's chain being robbed recently before, and then after this, all hell just broke loose. 21 Knee went on the run all the way to the other side of Canada, but was eventually caught and found guilty of second degree murder. Now, this whole situation was kind of weird because West Gang's area, Driftwood, and Smoke Dog's area, Regent Park, didn't really see seem to have much issues with each other prior to this murder. Like both areas are easily around 30 to 45 minutes away from each other and the Driftwood rapper Presser and Smoke Dog seem to have a good relationship with each other with them both being part of Drake's European tour and being seen in several pictures with each other. But the murder of Smoke Dog caused tension between both Regent Park and Driftwood and the response to this was worse than anyone expected. By 2020 long after his kidnapping charges were dropped, Presser took his music career to the next level and had moved out to Los Angeles ready to take on the US music scene and it was seen
seeming like another rapper coming straight out of Driftwood was looking to join him soon called Houdini. Houdini was creating a crazy buzz in Toronto with tracks like Late Night which is on now 11 million views. You could really tell Houdini was taking his music career serious as well when he moved to the other side of Canada in a city called Vancouver so he could be closer to LA where he was networking and anytime he was in Canada he would stay well away from Toronto but deep into Covid times in 2020 after several months away from his family he decided it was time to go visit them in Toronto during the Easter period. During his time back in the city he was staying at his friend's Airbnb in downtown Toronto but in May 26 tragedy struck. Word got around that Houdini was back in the city and when Houdini and a couple friends were out and about in the centre of the city a rented blue Volkswagen managed to lock onto the vehicle Houdini had been travelling in and waited around 40 minutes for Houdini and his friends to go back into his car. When Houdini walked past the blue Volkswagen, the Volkswagen U-turned and started letting off shots into Houdini and his friends. Houdini started running for his life immediately while one of his friends was shooting back at the attackers. But it was clear that Houdini was the car's target, with the car catching up to Houdini and the shooter jumping out to get some more shots off onto him. The scene just looked like a complete mess. Shots were flying everywhere in broad daylight with civilians in full view. One woman was even hit by a stray bullet. All of this being in the entertainment district of Toronto. In London terms, this is just like a broad daylight shootout happening in Mayfair. It's just something that should not be happening. Houdini managed to get to a nearby alleyway, but by this time he was already shot, which he sadly didn't survive from. This was a big blow to the Toronto scene, and a lot of big rappers paid homage to Houdini who died way too soon. Houdini had a memorial take place the next month to celebrate his life, which obviously Houdini's friends and family attended alongside quite a few West gang members. But the word came out about the funeral and a couple uninvited guests pulled up. A massive shootout happened where more than 60 shots were fired but luckily no one suffered any serious injuries from the shot. Two West gang members called Burner Bands and GD were arrested for the shooting despite them only defending themselves. Leading region Park and Driftwood to fully start feuding with each other, all stemming from 21 Neat's murder of Smoke Dog. 21 Neat also has a blood brother part of West Gang who goes by the name of 22 Neat. But just like 21 Neat, 22 story doesn't end quite well. 22 Neat's sad story started after allegedly another West Gang rapper called YS alongside another member called Flipper were allegedly paid to execute a member of a Canadian Mafia. A month after this murder, the West Gang rapper YS was found dead himself in the execution style murder all the way on the other side of Canada. Now allegedly 22 Neat has something to do with this murder and a couple days after 22 Neat was found dead himself in quite a crazy month of events. Now we're in 2023 and Jaina Fincher left wondering how big some of these artists could have been if they stayed alive. Press is still holding it down for the north side of Jaina Finch, setting up camp in LA and still releasing good music. Robin Banks doesn't release too much anymore, focusing on other ventures while still being paralysed. Another West Gang rapper who went by the name Tool Up Twin was a victim of a triple murder inside an apartment party in downtown Toronto. It's even alleged that he actually killed the two other victims in the triple murder and then shot himself in the head after realising what he had done. But he still has a twin that still raps till this day. The south side of Jaina Finch has always struggled a bit with producing big rappers. One rapper which has seen quite a bit of success is a rapper called LB Spiffy who was actually one of the first underground Toronto rappers I've listened to back in 017 to 18. Another up and coming rapper coming out of South Jane was NHS JJ but sadly yet again he was a victim of a murder in 2020. But the hottest rapper coming out of South Jane is definitely a rapper called Duvi who started seeing nationwide success after his hit single called Nightmares. Hopefully we start to see more underground Toronto rappers making it out of Toronto like Presser. And let me know in the comments if you want me to cover any more crazy Canadian stories. But for now it's been your boy Kid Nerd and peace out.